time ever the Wolfpack are wearing the black helmets with the full red unis. It's going to be a dog fight tonight. The Huskies going up against the Wolfpack. Can't even wait, guys. Thank you so much, Lauren. Demi has been an impact player through the first three weeks, and he gets his first start tonight. UConn won the toss and deferred. So it'll be the Wolfpack offense taking the field as Devin Leary makes his 24th start for NC State. Last week, James, 15 for 23, 121 yards. He was good, but he and the Wolfpack know he can be better. Yeah, and, and, and it starts with him. He, he certainly knows that. He is a heady leader of this football team. He knows what he needs to do, and, and what they need to do just as an offense is get him going with the quick game and, and get him rolling a little bit, lathered up early. And man, if you're a Wolfpack fan, you would love to see him connect on a couple of these deep balls, a couple of these explosive plays here tonight and get that thing going, and it'll be rocking on all cylinders. Looking right immediately, looking deep. Thayer Thomas makes the adjustment, makes the catch. Off he goes. Malik Dixon-Williams can't get there. It's a 75-yard touchdown for NC State. Hard to imagine a prime time play to start an evening game better than that. Well, just what we called for, the explosive play. They have been non-existent really here as of late. And leave it to the little big man. In this world of college football, you've got so many giants out there on the outside now. The big 6'5 bodies, long bodies. Six foot Thayer Thomas going up and finding a way to pull that football down. The extra point is good. First play from scrimmage on offense. The Wolfpack making some noise. On that catch, Thomas becomes the eighth Wolfpack receiver in history with at least 2,000 receiving yards in his career. Also his 22nd career receiving touchdown. Now alone for the two spot in the history of the program. And Chris Sheeran is the corner here and he just runs on by you can't lose a field defensively of where that body is of the receiver it's in essence a back shoulder throw here just an underthrown ball really if you will and Thayer Thomas if there's anybody that's going to fight and go up and find a way to pull it down it's this guy and then he'll go find the paint so the leading receiver just keeps on coming and that'll get him hopping there on the Wolfpack sidelines that's for sure my goodness 14 seconds in it's seven nothing now the last time the Huskies went on the road to face an ACC foe they led seven nothing about 10 seconds into the game because they returned the opening kickoff in Death Valley last November before today that was the last time the Clemson Tigers had trailed in a football game no electric return here and the Huskies will take the field at their 25-yard line, their freshman quarterback, Zion Turner, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's talented, but he is very young, and he's replacing Taquan Roberson, who got hurt about 10 plays into the opener against Utah State. Yeah, how unfortunate. A, a quarterback battle that was pretty close through camp, but Robinson won it. And early in that Utah State game, coaches said, you know, you could see he was ready. It was his show. Scored on the opening drive, and then he was injured. So it's up to Zion Turner. But the good news is... He's a winner. He he's expects to win. He comes from one of the winningest football programs in high school ball in the Sunshine State, St. Thomas Aquinas. Complete, completes his first pass. Kevin's Clarcius with his sixth catch of the season for 11 yards and a Huskies first down. And that, that's key, Evan. I'm sorry. But, to, but for them to come out, hey, disregard what just happened. And this place is, is rocking and the noise against your offense. Got a young guy. Let's make a nice, easy completion. They move the chains as well. And it's a fresh set of downs here, so they're moving things early. Tight formation. Turner's going to keep it himself. And two plays, two first downs for UConn into NC State territory. 17 on the ground for Zion. 
Zion, who had 42 yards rushing in the big house in the 59 to nothing loss against Michigan. And, and, you know, and defensively, yeah, it's great that we're all swarming the football and making big plays and hunting together, but therein lies the rub. You, you don't want to step out of responsibility. You don't want to try to go make things happen that aren't your role on that defense. Everybody's got to play their assignment. And sneaking out the gate for back-to-back -back first downs goes Turner. Aaron Turner hits the football. The receiver, who we expected to get some rushing opportunities today, met in the backfield there by Corey Durden, among others. And he goes nowhere. Our impact players are brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Yeah, Aaron Turner, uh, a Percy Harvin type, uh, comparing him to somebody here in, <laughs> in the last few years of, of college football. Just look for him, them to scatter him around with all the injuries, try to get him to make some big plays. And then you've got, take your pick on the defensive side, some incredible linebackers, especially the leader in the middle, Isaiah Moore. Boy, was he special in the win over Texas Tech last weekend. Well, the Wolfpack defense has gotten healthy for the most part, especially in the linebacking core. Turner not going to shake free from Jakeen Harris. It'll be third and seven. Jakeen Harris, his number one job right there is to get outside. Your help is inside. Force that runner and a shifty one at that back inside. So not only does he do job number one, but the bonus is he drops it. So a third down and long, and they'll make some noise here on Carter Finley right now. Aaron Turner, Jacob Flynn bunched together at the top of the formation. Turner in motion. And the give to Devontae Houston. And he's going to get close to the first down. It'll be marked about a half yard shy. Look at this offensive line. They've been impressive early. Getting up and moving the leaders of this team in a quick snap. As we saw that on fourth down. Turner trying to sneak it up to the middle. And NC State was ready for it. And this is all about the spot. They really had to get to the 37. Dave Doran didn't think they got there, and from that spot, it's going to be NC State football. Yeah, Texas Tech just one of four on fourth down against this defense. UConn, 0 for 1 to start tonight. Well, Jim Mora, first year coach at UConn, six years at UCLA, long time in the NFL. He's got an uphill battle tonight against the pack. We're spicing things up. Another sold out Connor Finley here on a Saturday night in the North Carolina Capitol. 7-0 NC State. 315 into the first. Let's take a look at our four keys to the game with James Bates. All right, Mr. Saturday Night Special. And not the, I use the Leonard Skir, uh, Skinner lyric because special teams is so important for UConn. Boy, if they struggled on the third phase of the game against Michigan. They gave up a big kick return for a touchdown. They had a punt block. They have got to shore that up because they're playing against an NC State team that has been phenomenal going back even to last year on special teams. Just game after game, they have made such a difference. Todd Goebel's group in that third phase. And for, uh, for NC State, zero waste. No wasted opportunities. Play complimentary football. Take advantage of turnovers. Score off of turnovers. Don't waste it. And that's on sus uh, sustainability day, by the way. A lot of people can't do that. That's right. Sharp. Well, Packer not going to score on one play on this drive. Keon Lassane stopped after a short gain of two by Malik Dixon Williams. Nice job in the open field by Dixon Williams out of Orlando, Florida. And you know, one thing that that I've seen early in this one, and, and you know, hey, the, the big play aside, this is a UConn team that isn't hanging their heads after a 59 to nothing. Uh, beating by Michigan last snap. week. False start. Number 74. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Gary Patterson is our referee tonight. You know, right behind maybe getting some big plays here with this offense is that. <laughs> it's that. I, it, it's just. I mean, you've got some veteran guys who have played so many snaps on that offensive line and just too many 
pre-snap mistakes and penalties that can kill you in some of these big games. Demi Sumo Cartenbeck bouncing off tacklers. This kid from Jersey has spunk and skill. 18 yards for DSK. Just how Jordan Houston started it on the ground last week against Texas Tech, setting the tone behind that big offensive line. And I love the one-two punch of those two guys. We won't see Jordan Houston. Lauren told you off the top tonight he should be okay in the concussion protocol for next week against Clemson. So it'll be the zero show for a while here early. Daryl Jones gets an early touch. And he's forced out of bounds right around the 38-yard line. Trey Wortham ushered him out of bounds. A gain of eight. Back to our Toyota Impact players, James, for the Wolfpack, Devin Carter. They expect big things out of this guy. Well, and you know what? He's they're gonna need they're gonna need him as the year goes on. Zero catches against Texas Tech. And Jackson Mitchell leads the country in tackles coming into today with 49. So keep your eyes on number eight in that white uniform. Mitchell banked up in the fourth quarter last week. Didn't play down the stretch. Deep ball. Thomas can't get this one. Pretty good coverage there by Chris Sheeran. And it will be third and short here for the pack. Evan, you're right. And, and it was Chris Sheeran on the coverage earlier where he ran by. He, he lost. Here's a shot to the head with Leary and UConn. Lucky they don't get a flag there. But, you know, he's beat a little bit. He just puts that head down. He's not trying to peek back. He's just running and at the end, raking through that wrist. So if that ball falls in the hands of Thayer Thomas, he's able to rip it away. That's good defensive play. Leary calls his own number and will move the chains, picks up a couple. It's interesting, James. This NC State team has two guys from Jersey. So important to the offense with Leary and Sumo Carnbay. We asked Demi about that yesterday. He said, where the best football in the country is, New Jersey. How about a little that? grin on his face. I got I, I, you got to have the confidence, right? But I guess there's some people on the team from Florida and, and some from North Carolina uh, that might want to argue a little bit. <laughs> Leary zips it to the outside, connecting with Jones. Knocked down immediately. <laughs> Daryl Jones, who played for the now wide receiver coach of this Wolf Pack, Joker Phillips, at Maryland, transferred over from Virginia Beach, Virginia, graduate student. It's been a pleasant surprise for this team. Little swing pass and some space. Lassane has the first down inside the 25. Trying to get the ball to Keon Lassane early. Both Keon Lassane and 88, Devin Carter, trying to get them involved. A good job blocking down the field for his teammate by Porter Rooks. That helps spring them and move those chains. Well, we know Dave Doran was watching the Wake Forest Clemson game earlier today. Double overtime thriller in Winston Salem. Both pack heading to Death Valley next week as Leary slides down. It'll be spotted at the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and six. And a 7 30 kickoff here, a noon kickoff in the triad. And they got to get a pretty good look at uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the Tigers that were on display today. Yeah, my Gators lost, your Demon Deacons lost, eight. Lauren Jabara's Michigan Wolverines won at least. <laughs> Sumo Karnbe has the first down and more. Demi Sumo Karnbe extends into the end zone. 20-yard touchdown for Demi. Evan, he's so tough to bring down. Look at that offensive front moving in unison. 
and he's got the speed. When he turns on the Jets, you're not going to catch him if you take an angle where you're chasing him from behind. So as a backer, or as somebody that even penetrates on that defensive line, once you're there and he's on his way north and south, you better adjust that angle and go hope that you can meet him at the goal line. Because he's going to beat you there. He won't meet you there. Man, as he a, is fun to watch. As a backer, what are you seeing and thinking when you watch him break those tackles? Just that this, you, have, you have to be on. You have to be perfect with your angles. And that's one thing that these backers for this, this team, his own team, that I've been really impressed with. Their angles are very good. And the inside out and good fits. Right down the middle for Christopher Dunn. And it's 14 hit. Third rushing score of the season for Demi Sumo Carnbay. Washington has failed family. One fan wants to see more. He's not quite impressed enough by the Wolfpack start, but half a quarter in the books. Goodness, 14 zip. Sumo Carnbay from 20 to punctuate the nine play drive. Let's go down to the sideline with Lauren Jabara. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, we talked to head coach Dave Dorn a little bit earlier this week, and he said, look, going into this game today, we're not focusing on Clemson next week. We're focusing on us and how we can improve 1% every single day. So actually, on their Tuesday meetings, guys, every single player writes down one thing that they want to focus on heading into the week, and then they share it with their other teammates so everyone can be aware of those improvements that they want to make. And one of the biggest things they're focusing on as a team, 12 explosive plays per game. Guys, we've already seen quite a few of those in this one. We sure have. Another touchback for Colin Smith. Dave Doran instituted this one more philosophy seven, eight years ago. But he said the guys in the culture has really gotten to a place where it is it's permeating everything they do right now. Focusing on the one more, one thing to improve each week. I, I love it. I, I love the mindset. You know, if it, you, you're not you're not staying in the same spot, so you're either you're getting worse or you're getting better. And let's make sure we get better and let's let's hold each other accountable. Let's hold ourselves accountable by writing it down, putting it on paper. I mean, it's like just last week, Boston College, we had that game, and Lauren Jabara, she wrote on her goal, her one thing was to wear more tigers in her attire. She's got tons of tigers tonight, so check that one off. She said she couldn't wear dogs, so she had to wear cats. Right. And, you know, the Huskies and the Wolfpack are playing. You can't show bias one way or another. The canines. It's a six-yard run on first down for Devontae Houston. Lauren, would you like to defend yourself? I would. Honestly, you guys, I just thought, look, we have two dogs competing on the field right now between the Huskies and the Wolfpack. Why not complete the circle of life, the zoo, if you will? And I've gotten, like, six cat names. I've gotten Jaguar, Tiger, Lion, pick your cat. Pick your choice. <laughs> I think it could be leopards, too, on that outfit. Here's Devontae Houston again. No relation to the injured Jordan Houston for NC State. A little more on the one more about Isaiah Moore. We asked the middle linebacker, what's your one more for this week? Is it better communication? I said, it's pretty loud. How do you communicate in this atmosphere when you're on defense? So the guys in front of me, they should be able to hear me. The guys behind me, it's all hand signals. But it's being very active. Give a signal, get a signal. They want to be better. Yeah, and the captain, he'll get them all straight, that's for sure. Let's see what they've got on the third down and short now. Remember, last time out, UConn was stuffed when they went for it on fourth down. That's a direct snap that bounces and goes nowhere. Robert blown up immediately and here comes the punt team yeah trying to get cute on third down and short but when you've got a big defensive front you're staring down like that you, you got to get interesting at times the snap uh, i'm not sure if, if Giordoni, if if he forgot that he was supposed to snap it to the back when the after the quarterback after turner left but UConn lucky that this one takes a nice hop and they can punt it away and try to push NC State back. Mayor Thomas standing in his own 29. Calls for a fair catch. And goodness, he positioned himself perfectly because he was waiting at the 29, and he catches it at the 29. And we'll take a timeout. Dave Doran's Wolf Pack has the ball back. They're two for two, scoring touchdowns so far. Works Nitro. He's zero. And Devin Leary retaking the field. I'd say he's had a pretty good start, James. Five for six, 98 yards, a 75-yard.
presented by Z-Max Micro Lubricant. He is rising up the charts in NC State history. Yeah, reeling them in. And some great names on that list ahead of him. And shoot, we're just getting started here tonight, so he might do some damage and creep up that list. Uh, perhaps maybe even up to a, a number four before the night's over. Got to imagine with the week that was in ACC chatter, Wolfpack fans had to enjoy their alum Jacoby Brissett getting the best of North Carolina alum Mitchell Trubisky on Thursday night. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. There, there was a little bit of chatter. Uh, from one of the other teams here in the triangle. Well, the day began with the North Carolina ACC squads unbeaten. That's no longer the case. The Wolfpack stand alone, and Keon Lassane making tacklers miss. Picks up a dozen on the first play of this drive. Excellent job by Keon here to go back across his body and catch this ball. This ball's a bullet. It's thrown hard. It goes back and then to tuck it and go and get what you can. Good hustle from Lesane there, and a nice-looking ball thrown by Leary. Six first downs for NC State. Back to Lesane again. His fourth catch of the opening quarter. Made his first career start back in week one at ECU. He had one catch in that game for 24 yards. Played a lot of football as a reserve, though. I mean, tonight's 35th college football game. But getting an expanded role. Coaches are excited about what he can do. Out of the backfield. and Pretty good game there for Demarcus Jones, the second. Yeah, people like Demarcus Jones going to get a chance to step up and do some work here tonight. Look at the guys out on the edge. He's not only out there to catch footballs and look pretty, get down in the nitty gritty and block. That's how the big plays are sprung when they're locked on to those defensive backs. Back to Thomas. And he's tripped up. Inside the 40, it'll be second and two. What, what, what can you say about Thayer Thomas? I mean, the career this dude has had for NC State. That, that he's just a, he's a fighter and he's a winner. If, if you were starting a football team, he would be one of the first guys you would want on your team. He's, he just, he's just so dang competitive. You can just tell, he just, every, th every single thing he does, he's a fighter and he can do it all. We've seen him throw a lot of touchdown passes too. Pretty good defense trying to get the ball to Devin Carter. But a hand in the cookie jar. Trey Wortham knocks it away. So big man, you know, they're coming to you. You got to find a way to catch those and, and, and get involved. You know, that's what we're calling for. And a lot of Wolfpack fans are calling for, hey, get number 88 involved. Making his 37th start here today. Remember back in 2021, he led the team with almost 18 yards of reception. 92 catches, about 30 a year for the last three seasons. Third and two. Both pack now three for three on third down. Porter Rooks out of the formation to move the chains for NC State. Yeah, Leary is in a nice rhythm and he throws such a pretty ball. Sure this, does. This, you know, quicker game and, and right on time here running those routes. Porter Rooks, what do I have to get? Two yards for a first down? Boom, I'm going to put that foot in the dirt. I'm going to break it out and that ball's waiting on me. You know, it's so tough to defend, especially when you're playing with a little bit of cushion like that. Defensively, you got to know where those chains are, where they're trying to get. Tricky Wolf pack, and that might bring a flag. Yes, indeed. Julian Gray, horse collar down. And NC State will go inside the 20 after the penalty. Holding. Offense, number 74. Interesting. Oh. Well, that's why I don't have a white hat on, James. Well, but I, I'm with you there, partner. I thought it was going to be a horse collar all the way. And that's Anthony Belton, who had a pretty big penalty on a trick play last week. And was called for a false start earlier in the quarter. Yeah, and this right here, that's it, this should be offsetting. And that's when the flag came in. So everybody thought the same thing as us. 
and, and Dave Doran saying the same thing. But but if that's not a horse collar, I don't know what is. And could you argue it was Jersey and he didn't get his hand in the collar? But it, but it, it I mean, that, it's anything up there. It doesn't matter if it's if it's the shoulder pads or if it's the jersey. It's just dangerous because it's you know it's it's so tough on the knees when you tackle like that. So a team that doesn't get a lot of penalties, UConn dodging one there. Back to Rooks. This will be one yard shy of the first. I mean, coming into tonight, Devin Leary had completed passes to 17 different receivers in the first three games of the year. And this play halted before it starts. Round of the snap, ball start. Number 56, offense, five yard penalty. The left tackle not to blame. It's the right tackle, Bryson Spees. A vet, it, you know what I mean? It, here's a here's a, a graduate player out there, and this is something that is just a momentum killer. You know, it's, you got the holding penalty, but these little five-yard penalties can add up, and they have really been a bugaboo for Dave Doran and his team here so far this year. Looking for Thomas, comes back to the right, sets up the screen, and it's well defended. Chris Sheeran, former Missouri Tiger. Goodness, his, his old school had a heartbreak today against the Auburn Tigers, but uh, Sheeran's making his plays here in the first. And Jim Mora, remember, he's not only the head coach, but he's the defensive coordinator as well. And he's done a pretty good job of getting these guys in position and playing hard after giving up 59 to Michigan in the big house last weekend. A nice tackle there. On third down, Leary floats it deep, and it's incomplete. Malcolm Bell in the coverage for the Huskies. Again, a fantastic job and a well-coached secondary that we're looking at. Bell is beat, puts his head down. When those eyes get big, when that receiver's hands go up, that ball's there. He, he, he can't afford to turn around, but try to rip it away. And we've seen it on a couple deep balls here tonight. Nice job, even after the bust early on the first play that went for 75 yards, they've really locked it down a little bit in defending these receivers, knowing NC State's gonna try him deep. Christopher Dunn from 48. Got it! Another make for the school's all-time leading scorer. Getting some headbutt action. Fifth generation farmer right there, putting it right down the middle. What a career he's had. That's his 74th field goal in his career. It's an NC State record. He needs uh, 22 more field goals to set the all time NCAA record. Zane Gonzalez is uh, that little innate piece of information. And now a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Dave Doran and Jim Mora had similar messages this week talking about measuring ourselves against ourselves. And NC State is playing at a different level and focusing on getting ready for the Clemson Tigers next week. UConn has a more manageable schedule in the months ahead after Syracuse and Michigan and NC State here today. And is there encouragement that could be had on the sidelines for UConn holding them to a field goal there? This can be encouraging, a little, little bit of juice to set up some decent field position, but let's talk a little bit more about Jim Mora. Here's Lauren Jabbar. Thanks so much, Batesy, appreciate it. Yeah, well, we talked to Jim Mora this week 
just about what the team has been able to do. And he said, look, we have 12 guys injured right now. So as a coach, I need to come in and be patient with the team. I need to give them answers, know what things that we need to do as a team to improve, but also listen and hear what, you know, they need to do and how they want to improve themselves too. So he's a really patient head coach. He said, this is crazy how young this team is, how injured this team is. So they're working with the pieces that they have right now, but he is helping them improve every single day and also giving them the answers that they need in practice of what they need to work on as a team. Absolutely, Lauren, and very candid at, you know, and how it's been tough to go from that head coaching role to a defensive coordinator as well that he didn't expect, and here's the defense swarming. And just to go way back and answer your question, Evan, yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you can keep this offense out of the end zone, that's, that's a small victory. And obviously that seven points adds up a lot faster than the threes. Wouldn't they like to get a little something going here as we get near the second quarter on offense? Jim Morris said he'd never been beat 59 nothing in 35 years coaching. But look, he's the son of a Marine. He was a walk-on that earned a scholarship, played in a couple of Rose Bowls, coached a NFL team to the NFC Championship game. He's got a life in football. And this is a different type of rebuilding experience as one of the guys that'll help build the foundation, Victor Rosa. Takes the carry that brings us to all zeros at the end of the first. Josh Harris and the Wolfpack are hyped. Took the NC State offense 14 seconds to score. Available exclusively online at HomeDepot.com. Um. Undertone. A look at our first quarter stats brought to you by the Georgia Drive Chevy Dealers. Everything good except for the penalties for the team in red. Well, let's see if third down conversions can turn the good way for UConn. Third and long on this one. They need nine. And, well, that's a nice catch, but it's going to be shy of the first down. Pressure brought up the middle. Tanner Engel coming from the safety spot. Yeah, they come from all over. I mean, they're coming from the sidelines, it seems like, when you're playing Tony Gibson's defense. This time, it's one of the best safeties around. Tanner Engel, he gets there. And, hey, credit Zion Turner getting that ball off and completing a pass and not taking the sack. A big hit when you've got a heat-seeking missile hunting you down like that, putting it away again. George Carrington punted the ball nine times at the big house last week. Just his second punt here, and uh, it'll be down right around the 23-yard line. 47 seconds gone in the second quarter, and we'll pause for a brief moment for this message from Green Machine. With our 62-volt battery-powered blower in your hands, you are a machine. So power the machine with Green Machine. Available online at HomeDepot.com. Jim Mora did not plan on being the defensive coordinator. Lou Spanos, who was the interim coach when he, when Jim Mora joined the team last November, taking a leave of absence. So life has gotten even trickier for Jim Mora. Devin Leary unable to get free from Eric Watts in the backfield. Watts had his first sack of the season in Ann Arbor last week. And he gets one against the 12th-ranked Wolfpack here tonight. Yeah, five solo tackles to go along with that sack, doing a great job of motoring down and corralling Devin Leary. And that's 10 sacks on the year now for Jim Mora's Husky defense. Demi Sumo Carnbay has a 20-yard touchdown already. Just a yard here, runs into the arms of Price Yates. Demi Sumo Carnbay, named after his great uncle. His great uncle was named Demi. His dad's last name is Sumo. His mom's last name is Carnbay. His mom, Joyce, born in Liberia. When he was recruited, he was just Demi Sumo, but he wanted to add the Carnbay as a tribute to his mom. Devin Leary steps up, zips it to Rooks. Across the middle for the first down. Leary's throwing a good ball tonight, Jake. Yeah, he really is. Those, those intermediate balls and, and a few of those short routes. How about this? Pocket presence, the pressure coming up top. Let me step up 
hit the brakes and throw a laser in there to move those chains on a third down and long after the sack in a bit of a tricky situation. No sweat, says the captain of this offense. Leary goes closer to 200 yards in the first half with that completion to Thayer Thomas. 17 yards gives Leary a buck 84. Still early here in the second quarter. NC State 3 0 for the first time since they started 5 0 in 2018. That year they started 9 and 4. Certainly expectations around here are about as high as they've ever been. Absolutely. Preseason ranked the 13 highest in 47 years, Evan. Floating in for Thomas and just out of the outstretched hands of the talented grad student from Wake Forest. See, you know, these, these balls that we've gotten so excited about, the, the, the frozen ropes, just the, the bullets that he's thrown throughout the night here in this first half. And that one, if that one has a little bit more touch, just a tiny bit more air on it, then Thayer Thomas may have a big touchdown number two. Tim Beck up there in the booth for the second week in a row. He went up last week against Texas Tech. You ever see that field, that defense a little bit better up there. Big hole for Demi. Trey Wortham, Durante Jones brings him down after a gain of 11. It's hard to believe that NC State was the first and only Power 5 program to offer this kid a scholarship. And he was an unknown coming into this year, James. I mean, he was a non-factor last year as a freshman. Well, just all of his action was on special teams. And Delbert Mims into the game. Gets his number called immediately, picks up four. But one thing, and, and, and this is the second time that I've had an NC State game here this year, it's been really fun to watch. And Dave Doran, you couldn't have drawn it up any better when you've got two running backs you know running backs you you're a team player but inside you you want to do it all for your team you got a little bit of that ego you want to be successful and when you have to sit on the sidelines and watch your partner do it it makes you even hungrier and it's very healthy to have good competition like they've got built around here now corner rooks brought down from behind by malik dixon williams that will set up third down at about four maybe closer to three NC State four of five on third downs thus far. They got to wait. Leary was ready to snap that football, but substitution. UConn had a chance to match. Almost jumping offside right there in the middle. Yeah, it was Delmont Gordine who kind of lost his stance, but didn't touch anybody. He got back. Ninth play of the drive here. Leary looking right, hits Devin Carter, shakes free the one tackle, Devin Carter to the end zone! But they're saying it's not a touchdown. Ruling him down at the half yard line. Larry and just you know pitching and catching was such a big target when you're six foot four 215 pounds you're able to wall off that defender and give your quarterback on that slant a and nice now, target now we're gonna look at it we'll leave on the field with Paul Carey stepped out and got down prior to crossing the goal line previous play is under further review well you want to get it right this is one of those situations first and goal from the half yard line I think you know, you, you want to get it right, obviously, but we all know what the likely outcome of this possession is going to be. Well, you, you know what, but hey, tell that to Jim Moore. And, you know, he, he'd come after you. I mean, you make him snap the ball. And a lot of crazy things can happen every single time you snap the ball. That's why it's so important to keep him in front. And gosh, I don't know that. I don't. Looked like a touchdown. Yeah, it absolutely did. And remember the pylon. 
Yeah, that that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. I mean, the if they doesn't step out there, we know that foot isn't out. The knee comes down, but really on the goal line, and the ball was in front of the knee. And look at the fight in Devin Carter, showing you why Wolfpack fans have been calling for the big man to get the rock a little bit more. One of the biggest games of his career, James, was last year against the Clemson Tigers. Double overtime, game-winning touchdown. And you, you, you alluded to it in the open. The Tigers, for Dabo Sweeney, have some work to do on defense. It was one of the first things he said after the game. we got to get our defense figured out. And he said, but we will. That's clearly a weakness of their team right now. And the question is, heading into next week, will the Wolfpack be able to capitalize on that the way Sam Hartman did today? Yeah, right. I mean, it's you know, Wolfpack last year winning in double overtime. Clemson winning in double overtime on the road against Wake Forest today. Two very different games, too, in yeah. terms of the number of points yeah. that were scored. Yeah. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. The ball be placed at the oh. half-yard line, first and goal. And my point wasn't that we should say it's going to be a touchdown. My point was to be, if we're going to stay, let's just play. Let's forget about the review, but we can move on. Oh, okay. NC State into the CPI red zone at the half-yard line. Opportunity perhaps for Delbert Mims III to get his second career touchdown. Dunk back to the air, Leary to cut for six. Right back to D.C. It's fun to watch Tim Beck call a football game. It's fun because, he, you know, he throws in a lot of trick plays. You know, he gives these defensive coordinators that are on the schedule in the future fits. You know, they're staying up extra late, extra practice time to, to try to defend all these. But it's also, if you watch, it, he, he takes care of guys that... They, they kind of earned it. You know, hey, that Devin Carter, he should have had a touchdown right there. Hey, let's get it to him. I like this matchup right here. Let's get him the football. And let's let him score that touchdown. They do. It was like last week with the payoff with Sumo Kongbe. But how about it? All kinds of offense. Evan Leffler, 24 to nothing. And the Wolfpack is rocking right now with 932 left in the first half talk about wolves and huskies did you know that Tuffy is actually a Tamascan that is the type of breed of dog that Tuffy is they can't breed wolves so Tuffy is pretty close to a wolf no, no one complains no I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that and Tuffy 3 is a wolf period I didn't hear that I wasn't listening I'm used to that <laughs> 24 nothing NC State <laughs> He's and a very gentle wolf. Colin Smith out for the kickoff. Devontae Houston, Victor Rosa back for the Huskies. But look, they, they had first downs on their first two plays from scrimmage. And they haven't really had a spark since. And it's because of the NC State defense. And for more on that, let's go to the sidelines to Lauren. Yes, that NC State defense has been on fire, especially last week. And a lot of that is due to our Hardys star to watch, Peyton Wilson. He's finally back on the field and healthy after such suffering a season-ending injury last year. Now, this is the time, second time this year that we're seeing Isaiah Moore, Peyton Wilson, and Drake Thomas able to play side-by-side -side in a game. I talked to Isaiah Moore earlier this week about Peyton and him being back. Last week, he had three tackles on his own, seven assisted tackles, and it was incredible to watch that linebacking core work together. Isaiah said it's been a long time of us three playing all completely healthy. Almost two years, it was a great showing, and we're so extremely happy for Peyton and everything that he's been able to do, his rehab back. And he said after that game last week, guys, against Texas Tech, he has never seen a bigger smile on anyone's face than he saw on Peyton Wilson's face, and Dave Doran echoed that, too. He's like, it's a heartwarming story. So excited to see those three guys playing back together. It truly is special to see those three guys, and they've got a dynamic defense. New quarterback for UConn, Cale Millen, the son of Hugh Millen, who played with Jim Moore at the University of Washington in the NFL for a number of teams. Cale more of a running back, but not that play. 
Swarmed by the Wolf Pack in the backfield for a loss of two. And it will be third down and a dozen. Yeah, hey, Ten, hop in there and run for your life on both plays here. Here's good job by that Wolf Pack defense. A couple of those linebackers that Lauren was just talking about. Yeah, now, those aren't, aren't gentle wolves. There's nothing nice about this defense. They're all mean and angry. Wolf Pack. Here's a third down and 12. The Turner back in there. Yep, Zion in the gun. Jolly the tight end in motion. And pass to the left, but well short of the line to gain. Aaron Turner makes the catch, but here comes the UConn punt team. Yeah, you can have that all day long. Peyton Wilson over there on that tackle. Hey, catch it in front of me. You guys got to go. You got about 12 yards to go. Sure, I'll let you have three or four yards to keep you in front and make the tackle get off the field. I want to ask you about the dynamic of defensive depth. I mean, Jalen Scott has played a lot of snaps in the linebacking core, too, with Moore and Thomas and Wilson. How does that linebacker depth make this NC State team better? Well, we got to take a break. They're telling me in the truck, and it's hey, when you want to talk linebackers, Evan, we got all night so let's take a break I'll catch my breath check my notes and we'll talk linebackers when we come back to Raw. Caleb Anthony shaking up we'll be back works nitro and he comes from a football family his dad played in the CFL for the Baltimore Stallions back when they had the Canadian Football League teams in Baltimore not the case anymore but to hopefully Caleb's gonna be okay it's a scary couple of weeks of injuries here well, these guys are not injured anymore though knock on wood Drake Thomas I say it more Peyton Wilson our discover the best brought to you by the fresh market is now a good time to chat linebackers <laughs> yeah there you go and you've got three of the best one of the, you know one of the best linebacking groups in the nation and one thing you asked me about was the depth even behind them and so much these young guys are learning guys like Betty and Fordham Caden Fordham is an outstanding young linebacker behind them they're learning so much and it's, it's just such a competitive room when you've got so many greats in there just want to fight to get to the football and there, there are a couple of them sit right there and Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas and Isaiah Moore has done so much for this university on and off of the field it is Pack United, so it's the residual effect will carry over not just for young linebackers on the field, but for so many here in this Raleigh community. It's Delbert Mims the third in for Demi Sumo Karn Bay. And let's check in with Lauren on the sideline about DSK. Lauren. Thanks so much, Evie. I just received word from NC State that Demi Sumo Karnbe out with upper body injury right now. His return to the game is questionable. That could be a big blow for the Wolfpack running game. Already missing Jordan Houston tonight. And that's a major yikes if you're thinking long term and hopefully just a precautionary thing for Dave Doran and Tim Beck to pull Demi out of the game for now. A bullet. Called in by Thayer Thomas for a Wolfpack first down. And, and, and back to Sumo Karn Bay. Wow, let's let's hope that it's just a stinger or something like that because Jordan Houston, who took the knee to the head, uh, concussion protocol, so he's out against Texas Tech. He left the game. There he is. I know you gave us your keys to the game earlier. Those are sponsored and big bucks go into your keys to the game. My keys to the game for the Wolfpack tonight, in my mind, I, I, I thought they need to get the perimeter receivers going. That's off the hands of Anthony Smith downfield. And perhaps even more importantly, I thought they had to stay healthy. That, that was the number one key coming into tonight with next week being what it is. Yeah, isn't that the ongoing theme in, in all college football? It takes a little bit of luck, and it takes, it takes keeping a healthy group, and that's where depth again comes in. And here, right here, Smith, be, I mean, you want to take that next step and be one of the top programs in college football. You got a chance. You got the players, the, the pieces. You got to catch those balls. Coyote Oladelli rips down Delbert Mims after a gain of six. So as of now, it looks like it'll be what, you know, last week was a Sumo Kongbe Jordan Houston show. It's now become a Demarcus Jones, Delbert Mims, two sophomores. 
That's why you have over 100 players on the roster. Yeah. Doesn't Jim Mora know that? A little bit of a late hit there. Durante Jones, but it will be a first down for Julian Gray. You get a lot of guys on the perimeter. Carter, Lassane, and Thomas in the slot start. We've seen Jones and Smith. We've seen Gray. We've seen Brooks. And when you've got so many weapons that you're staring across the ball at, Jim Moore's defense, it's it's tough because there, we've seen a couple easy conversions on third down with these passes. These uh, players like Gray right there, just just hooking up right at the sticks, connect, move those chains with the soft coverage. But you play too tight, they're going to run by you. Mims will be spotted right at the 45-yard line, picks up about three. Delbert Mims has been a long time Wolfpack standout on special teams. There was a note that he played 261 special team snaps last season. Just to quantify his importance to those units. Uh, and a unit that has been so important here in Raleigh. I mentioned him earlier, the special teams coach Todd Gobel has done a fantastic job. Jackson White helping one of the assistants there with the special teams too. They got him going. Darrell Jones made one man miss, not another. Now, one thing I will say about these corners, when you flip on that Michigan tape from last week of UConn, it, it, at times it was like, well, why are they even lining up out there? Because those those wide receivers from from Michigan, and they're not world beaters, but they were just gobbling them up. It's you know, it takes a whole lot of want to. Who wants it more? Who, you know, do you want to block me more than I want to get off the block and go make a tackle? And there wasn't a lot of want to on the perimeter defensively for UConn. That's why Michigan is just a track meet at times. But they have done a better job of shedding blocks today. Larry zips it into the red zone. Carter brought down in the 14. 23 yards to D.C. <laughs> you know, again, look, look at that pocket. He's, he's got all the time he needs, and he's got that great big target in Devin Carter. And you saw the body, the, the body language, the energy when he popped up. Running into Malcolm Bell, he's like, you're getting in the way of my flex, dude. <laughs> Leary under pressure. Able to get rid of it. And there's a flag downfield. Wow. This is not for grounding. This is for something in the secondary. Wow. Because, I mean, you talk about a bailout. That ball was just thrown to be incomplete and live to play another down, but it might be. And if ever a ball was uncatchable, but this could be holding, and that's not a factor in that situation, unless he had already released the ball before the hold. Now they throw another flag in the backfield. Intentional grounding. Wow. Offense. Holding. Number seven. Defense. Those penalties all set. Replay the down. So, so they'll say. Schoolyard do over. <laughs> do over it. Yeah, so not outside the, the tackle box. He's got to be outside the tackle box. It obviously goes well beyond the line of scrimmage. And there's the holding flag. At the end, too. Can it be defensive holding on a ball when if the violation occurs when the ball's in the air, though, is my question. We'll move on. Carter picks up nine more. Man, I hope Carter, I, I hope he's had a lot of water because he's flexing so much he's going to cramp up. After every, after every catch, he pops up and fires up the guns, man. He's fired up to be involved like this tonight. Down at the one to Marcus Jones, the second. <laughs> NC State's offense looked good. Four drives so far, three touchdowns and a field goal. This is the fifth drive of the game. They need two more yards. Leary. Lassane hung on 
for the touchdown. Play the fight song again here in Raleigh. And light some fireworks while you're at it. Turn the lights off and on. Where's that switch at? The same. Tim Beck and Devin Leary have made it a point to get it to number 15 here tonight. The Saint on the brain. The Saint in the membrane. It's his fifth catch. His first touchdown of the night and of the season. And of his career. So a moment that Keon the Saint will never forget. And James, I mean, you want to sing a little bit more on our way to break? <laughs> you want more Cypress Hill? Well, that's the Funkalistic. Yes, look at it. Looking good. Knights nice going up tall and pulling it down. It's 31 to zip, Wolfpack. Anna, can you count to five without saying one or two? Back here at Carter Finley Stadium, NC State up 31 to nothing. Now, because absolutely no one asked, I thought I would give us a little history lesson on the similarities and differences, guys, of Wolves versus Huskies. First of all, the Wolf is worldwide. The Husky is just North America and Eurasia. Um, you talk about the Husky, 21 to 23 and a half inches tall. Wolves, 26 to 33 inches tall. The lifespan of a Husky, 12 to 15 years. The lifespan of a Wolf, six to eight years. Pretty crazy. Um, let's talk about the eyes for a second. Blue, brown, or black eyes for a Husky. You got yellow, amber, or brown for a Wolf. Body type, shorter muzzle, leaner bodies for a Husky. Longer muzzle, thicker bodies for a wolf. And guess what? We all like to talk about the teeth because they're both beautiful dogs, right? Huskies, shorter teeth. Wolves, longer teeth. And then the temperament, Huskies, domestic, domesticated, easily trained. That's probably why we see them. As a household animal, when you look at wolves, they're wild and they're resisting training. So the differences and similarities between a wolf and a Husky. There you guys go. Well, you know what? If you could have saved a lot of time, Lauren, by just saying Wolves 31, Husky 0. <laughs> we appreciate the zoology report. I was trying to give the in-depth report, guys. No, Come on, I, man. I, I like it. I like it. But I, I think we could have we could have helped him out a little bit by showing something other than the Westminster Dog Show Husky. You know, that was the contrast right there. You've got that mean wolf out in the snow. I, I did take notes. I'm gonna I'm gonna give everybody a quiz here later. I on expect there. a full report back later tonight. Okay. Right. That, that was <laughs> phenomenal. A plus, Lauren. A plus. Your Michigan professor professors would be very proud. All those science classes you took. Zion Turner. Feels like we haven't talked to him about him in a while. The Huskies, after a couple promising plays on their first drive, have not done much offensively since. Third down and short. I mean, Turner has not thrown an incompletion yet in the game. He's four for four for 20 yards. He had 11 yards on his first throw. Ooh. And, well, right on cue. Incomplete pass. And a little scuffle in the middle of the field. Tempers flaring here in Raleigh. Christian Haynes, the right guard in the thick of it. And a familiar phrase tonight, unfortunately for UConn, here comes the punt team. Yeah, well, and, you know, maybe fortunately for UConn that Shaheen Battle didn't cut underneath that one. Looked like he was going to give it a chance. And, Maybe have an opportunity to, to pick one in a football team that's, man, they've been doing a great job with intercepting football. So lucky to punt this one away to a very dangerous return man, as we all know. Let's see State with an interception. Eight straight games. They get a pick tonight. It'll set a record for the most straight games in NC State history with a pick. 48-yard punt that time from Caratan. NC State will begin its sixth possession, up by 31, buck 54 on the second quarter clock. Opportunities right here. Yeah, you're up 31 to nothing. You're in, in complete control. How much time on the clock? Under two minutes. How many times do you get an opportunity when you're full metal jacket, all geared up, to go a two-minute offense. Yeah, you can run it in practice all you want, but these opportunities, zero waste. Again, that's the ongoing theme, and it, it'll be interesting to see if there's a little bit of sense of urgency in moving it around here. 
Another fastball from Devin Leary, hitting Devin Carter on the outside. Andrew Husky and Eric Watts, who sacked Leary earlier in the half. You know, you think about it too. Is I'll bet you Jim Mora feels right at home. Be, you know, he was, he was a Husky in his college days. That's right. Husky on the other side of the country. Washington Huskies. It's this the way they're working that that toe back. I'm, I'm guessing, hoping it's just a cramp here for Eric Watts, the junior out of Sumter, South Carolina. The, the howl that we just heard was that a, a husky or a wolf? Yes, it could be either. Because you know the huskies, you see a lot of those uh, social media videos. The, the huskies, they like the howl too. Which one was that? Honestly, that was a wolf howl, gentlemen. That was a hardcore 100% wolf howl and i know i am like the zoology expert at this point last week or two weeks ago i was a meteorologist this week i'm all about the the animals in the zoo so that was a wolf that was a wolf howl for y'all <laughs> thank you never a doubt that lauren would have the answer to that one daryl jones makes his fourth catch 20 Five completions in the first half for Devin Leary. He's 25 for 30, just shy of 300 yards. He's got a third and two here. It's Mims up the middle for the first down. And Delbert Mims looking very Demi Sumo Kong Bay like. Boom, keeping those legs turning. Spinning that body and moving north and south, getting what you can. Back to the air, and Leary overthrows his target down the sideline. Daryl Jones, Wortham there in coverage for the Huskies. Nice job by Wortham, stride for stride right there in the hip pocket of the intended target. So James, let me ask you this. What has impressed you most about what we've seen from NC State in the first 29 minutes? Well, I, li I like to watch their offensive line, the athleticism and, and the strength, the big bodies that get up and run, uh, very athletic, and they, they play together as a group. You, you hate to see a few of the little pre-snap penalties. Great to see Devin Carter back and the intermediate routes. Well, the pressure coming, interception. Boyer Randall has it for UConn. Brandon Boyer Randall out of bounds near the 11-yard line. So UConn may be able to get on the board before the break. And, and, and I'll admit it, I was just about to say, he throws right here and he throws one right to Boyer Randall, who's a Texas Tech transfer, doing it for his homies from last week. They got beat. He's trying to help them out still a little bit. And uh, Oski, and look at the guys blocking downfield, but reading those eyes of Leary. Man, he's, he's had some big plays over the last couple weeks against some big-time talented teams. Against Michigan, he had a sack in the first and second quarter, and here he's got his offense set up. Get some points before halftime, perhaps. It's been a while since UConn has scored. Will it happen here? Not that play. Aaron Turner takes the ball to the seven. Clock ticking, 35 seconds in the quarter, and now a timeout called from the sideline by Jim Mora. You can see the way Drake Thomas, you know, this is a, a defense that has been really good in so many phases, but the the sudden change when they pop up they're not expecting to pop up right then after a turnover they've done their job here for the most part this season Drake Thomas out there flying around trying to keep him out of the end zone and here's one more look at that interception see Boyer Randall back into the coverage like he was the intended target. Yeah, dropping in that zone between two receivers, and you had two receivers that were running right into each other on the same plane. That makes it easy for a defense and draws a lot of defenders in that same area. Zion Turner, the 
The freshman gets drilled and he lost the football. His right tackle, Chase Lump, was there to pounce on. But it's a big loss, setting up third down and long. Now, Devin Leary may have a little bit more time here tonight, but when it's time to go, you better tuck it and get out of there because these guys are coming from somewhere. And the young freshman quarterback, Zion Turner, needs to understand that. That clock in his head, lucky to get this one back after he fumbles it. An excellent job being around that football to keep it there in UConn's hands. First sack of the season for David Van, the former state champion as a heavyweight wrestler at Cary High School just down the road. Don't ever get into an altercation with that, okay, James? No, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I know you you had some physicality to you as well, but this guy's a state champion. Yeah, not, not wrestling type stuff. Those guys are another level right there. Here you go, Sweet. The third down now. They need to get to the one. Devontae Houston makes it to the 10 before he's brought down by a bunch of Wolfpack defenders. Picks up seven. Now do you want points? Or do you want to go for the touchdown? It'd like to, it'd be nice to get that zero off the board. And I think that's what Jim Moore is doing. He's just letting that clock run down and he'll send out that field goal unit. He doesn't want to last week that it looked pretty ugly with that 59 to zero on your side. I mean, if you, you know, it, but then again, you know, are you kind of conceding and, and, and telling your team, hey, let's just kind of hang around. Noe Rulis hit a couple of long field goals in the elevation in Logan, Utah. And I don't mean to bring up the elevation to indicate he doesn't have a long leg. He does. He kicked a 56-yarder in high school. Rulis, a sophomore kicker for the Huskies. Will set up for what will likely be the final play of the half. 28-yard attempt. George Caratan is the holder. Can UConn get on the board? Yes, they can. So the interception from Brandon Boyer Randall sets up the ruleless 28 yard field goal. And I don't want to say the Huskies go into the locker room with any momentum, but. At least they've scored. They've scored most recently. And they will get the ball to start. And for the NC State Wolfpack, Devin Leary and company, he's able to distribute that football, move those chains. Zero penalties for one of the least penalized teams in the nation. Top 20 when it comes to fewest flags, just 39 penalty yards a game. Jim Moore's team is averaging. It is interesting. That down. They did have a flag thrown on them, but it was an offsetting flag, so right. it doesn't show up on the graphic. Not the way they wanted to start the second half, though. Victor Rosa barely makes it to the 10. No more pads for Demi Sumo Carpe. That's just hope. That is precautionary. And he'll be good to go next week. But I've got to imagine that'll be one of the first things the media wants to ask Dave Dorn about after tonight's game. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know. One thing that every, everybody should be talking about here for the rest of the season if they continue to play special teams like we just saw right here. Here comes UConn trying to get something going, but they're starting way down near their own goal line. Is, is just the effort by the special teams. It, when, when you have a special teams crew that's competing to be on the field and, and contribute like they are right now at NC State, it's a sign of a well-coached team and a, a good, exactly what you want in that locker room. It was really important last week against Texas Tech. The average starting field position for the Wolfpack last week was at the 38 and a half. The average starting field position for the Red Raiders was at the 22. Dave Doran said after the game, our special teams were dominant. Yeah, and it, and it just makes it makes that defense even hungrier. When, when you're sitting there, you can look right at you. you their back is to the, their own end zone. It just, it just encourages them to pin their ears back and pin that offense deep. Short gain on first down here. A couple yards for Devontae Houston. He's to the right of Turner again. Turner was looking that way. Now pushed to his left by Durden. And a 
Ushered out of bounds by the NC State defender. Jakeen Harris. Guy in Zion Turner talking with Jim Mora this week. And his offensive coordinator, Nick Charlton. They were talking before going to UConn. Zion Turner, and this is Pop Warner days on, only lost four games, his dad was telling the coaching staff, in his entire life. And he was 37-2 as a high school starter, three-year starter for a great St. Thomas Aquinas program down in the Sunshine State. Played his home games at Ryan Piccolo Memorial Stadium. But uh, he's not at Piccolo Stadium anymore. <laughs> And yeah, here he gets a completion, but waiting on it, like Devin Van down there doing an excellent job of just trying to snuff that one out. Was there ready to drop the receiver and dropping him for a loss and now punting out of their own end zone as you come. George Caratan to kick it away to Thayer Thomas. Pressure coming, and he shanked it. Off the side of his foot, and out of bounds. NC State will have it near their Husky 30-yard line. It'll be spotted at the 32. 22-yard punt. Did they get a piece of it, or did he just shank it? I think he just shanked it. They, they've been coming after it, and he's had no problem. The transfer from Arkansas. We, we've seen a couple boomers from him here tonight. He's had plenty of opportunities at nine punts against Michigan. And this one helps out an offense that certainly hasn't needed much help. Been able to drive the football up and down the field. You were wondering, would we see Devin Leary in the second half? The answer to that is yes. Deion Lassane in motion. The give to Demarcus Jones. And Jones spun down Number after a gain of seven. Watch the big man on the left, big 74, the tackle, Anthony Belton. I mean, this 330 pounder getting up and moving like that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's quite a guy paving the way for you if you're a running back. Going after the nation's leading tackler, by the way, who still made the tackle to help finish off Jones on the play. Marcus loses one there. Again, Jackson Mitchell. I mean, back in 2019, he was third in the nation among true freshmen in tackles. He's had double-digit tackles three times in the first four games for the Huskies this year. There's Jim Mora loves talking about this guy. Oh, yeah. Loves football, studies hard, all the things that you could say about a young, aggressive linebacker. Well, that, that right hand taped up because he's, he's playing with a screw in his hand. Yeah. The doctor said maybe he shouldn't play, and he wasn't trying to hear that. Plus, because linebackers are the toughest guys on the football field, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, what was that you were breaking up on me? Linebackers. <laughs> I'm kidding, I got you. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to think so, but every other position, I think, even even the receivers, maybe even some punters here and there would, would argue otherwise. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun position to watch, that's for sure. And, you know, and especially when you've got good defensive line play in front of them, which they, they certainly have at NC State, and Jackson Mitchell's had some good help, too. After the completion to Thomas, now looking to Thayer in the end zone, but that's well defended by Dixon Seven Williams. Five catches, 115 one, yards Williams, for Thayer Thomas. Thomas. Let's go down to Lauren for more on Jackson Mitchell. Thanks. Yeah, I talked to him this week, guys, and asked him about being the country's leading tackler. He said, it's not something I focus on. I'm just going out there and doing my job. But his dad was actually his coach his entire life. He said he tried out football in third grade, fell in love with it, been playing ever since. His dad played at Hofstra when they had a team. He coached me since I was third grade all the way up to high school, helped me fall in love with it. And even when he stopped coaching me, guys, he was still pushing me every day and helped me get to this collegiate level right now. So really cool seeing that awesome bond between him and his father and how he's helped him get to where he is today. Yeah, his family, they've got to be so proud of him. So much fun to watch your kids go out there and compete. And it's 
You know, I, I've, I've got a dad that never really coached me, but he was a longtime college coach, NFL coach. And, you know, when he knew I wanted to be a linebacker, he used to make sure he would tell me, hey, when you watch these games, don't just watch the ball. Watch these great linebackers. Watch them all the time. Watch what they do. And it's, it's easy to do when you've got great linebackers playing like Jackson Mitchell. Third down and four. Leary to the end zone off the hands of Joe. Here comes the field goal unit for NC State. A couple, and, and, and Larry's got a lot of completions, but a, a, a couple uh, right on target to right catch through the hands. That's a catchable ball. We saw a couple earlier in the game, and there haven't been many misses, but there have been a couple drops. And, some of these big plays that you'd like to see starting to come together. Oh, it's a fake. Flipping it to Dunn. And he's not going to get there. Trying to give the grad student kicker his moment. <laughs> Dave Doran, Tim Beck, pulling out the deep end of the playbook there. Okay, the score's 31 to 3. Okay, they, they don't, there's, there's not the sense of urgency, hey, if we don't do something drastic, we're going to lose this football game. Right now, it certainly doesn't feel that way, obviously. But what this does, what the reverse does earlier that we saw called by Tim Beck, what the Thayer Thomas throwing the football twice in the game last week and many times in his career. What that does for a defense next week, Clemson, down the road, is they have to spend time on all these. They have to, to bring them in, coach their guys up on them. Hey, we've got to watch out for this. So it's giving, it's giving fits to a lot of these defenses that they're about to see, all these trick plays that they throw out there for them just to put it on tape and get them thinking about it. If that had worked, Timmy Trumpet would have been blasting for 45 minutes here at Carter Finley. It would have felt like City Field in the ninth in Queens. <laughs> Goodness. There's Tim Beck up there. Mentioned earlier, just recently decided to head back up to the booth. It's, you know, the, the, the benefits. You can, you can see that defense. Wow, look at it fly around right there. This is Drake Thomas. Jalen Scott as well brings down Deshaun Harrison. There you go, 32. Don't get up there and all that junk. Young guys, sometimes they get caught up in some of the big guys. Hey, let's have a good feel for it. Where's the opening? Boom. Proper angle, inside out, and just lighten them up when you get there. It's a thing of beauty. Yes, linebackers are very tough, Evan. To answer your question from earlier, they're, they're the toughest. Can the Huskies be tough and convert a third down? They're 0 for 7. The freshman quarterback, Turner. Plenty of time. Taken off. Met by Peyton Wilson. Good night. Peyton Wilson's brother, obviously, an established major league pitcher. Talented one. He asked Peyton if he played baseball. He said, I'm too hyper. You may notice that about me. <laughs> my parents took me out of baseball in fifth grade. Lacrosse was more my sport. You could hit people. Well, even last week, you watched that Texas Tech game, and there were a couple times it looked like Texas Tech might be able to pick up a big third down conversion. But Peyton Wilson, as big as he is, in open field, he's just he's just money. Textbook open field tackle. Nowhere to go for Thayer Thomas on the return. 34-yard punt for Carrington. 7.55 in the third. 31-3. Four catches in the first three games, but he's come onto the scene tonight. Five for 63. He's built tough. Brought to you by Wrangler. Receivers can be tough too, James. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely can. Big 88 banging around there, refusing to go down. Not only did he get the third down, but got it down near the goal line on that one. Very tough, and then a nice tough catch to finish it off and to score to him. Leary remains in the game. And his 28th completion of the game hits Chris Toodle, his eighth different target. Toodle keeps his streak going, at least one catch in every game this year. 
Now, the one thing, too, is as you look at and you, and you pick apart what, what this offense does well, what, what, what they, they lack a little bit is, is, is you'd like to see someone that the defense fears. They're always going to run by you at any time. They can go blowing by you. Into the flat Mims. You know, Evan, so to have that one, you know, that Thayer Thomas had a nice 75-yard touchdown completion. But that's some, some crafty running after the, the back shoulder throw. But to have that burner, it just scares everybody on the defensive side and that defensive coordinator has to account for and to keep a lid on him is one piece to this puzzle that really would help to take them, uh, them to take that next step. On second down. Mims will move the chains to the 21st, first down of the night for NC State. We, we've looked at next week's matchup with the Clemson Tigers through the lens of NC State's offense versus Clemson's struggling D. What about the other side? DJU looked pretty good today for Clemson. They put up 51 and win on the road against an improved Deacon defense. How do you handicap Clemson over NC State's dynamic D? Yeah, he looked really good. And, and Shipley, Shipley runs with so much heart. Sure does. It's a nice open field tackle. And, and yeah, I, one thing that I can't wait to watch is, is the matchup. Of how many times do you see Uyung Galale well done. Tuck the ball and go, and you know, and, and, and you know, I mean, he's not, he's not leaving everybody on defense, but he can move well enough to move those chains and to buy himself some time. But I'd like, I can't wait to see Peyton Wilson because he's matched up with those quarterbacks so much. I can't wait to see. That's going to be a big train wreck when those two collide a couple times next weekend. Larry across the middle again inside the 20. By the way, in the previous play, Michael Allen with his first reception of the season. Mims picks up five here. It's third and short from the 19. With the hurry up. Back to Mims. And he didn't gain much, but he didn't need much. And he'll be the 22nd first down for NC State. Time of possession. Like most other stats are lopsided in NC State's favor. There's DJ's numbers today at Winston-Salem, truest field. And the play of the game might have been the two-point conversion when he was nearly wrapped up, but still got it away to tie the game. Of course, the, both teams scored multiple touchdowns after that, but phenomenal. Five touchdown passes for him, six for Hartman. I don't think there were any interceptions thrown in that game by either team. There were not. Leary to the end zone. Great play. Dixon Williams broke it up. A flag is down here in the CPI security red zone. And we'll check the marker. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face. Number 37. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Defensive lineman, Coyote Oladelli. The guilty party. There he is, left side of your screen. And yep. Yeah, it's, you know, and that's tough sometimes. You just got to grab what you can. Unfortunately, he grabs the face mask there. And, you know, nice defensive play, Dixon Williams. And a step on him on the route, was able to make up the speed and knock it away. And yeah. it's tied for second on the team in tackles. 28 coming in. That's the first accepted penalty today against UConn. Half the distance to the goal, setting up Mims to the five, to the four. Sat on from behind by Big Delmont Gordon. And Grant Gibson shaking up. The veteran center, his 40th straight start, his 53rd career game. He snapped that ball and he, and he got up and pulled in front of Mims, and Mims actually Gives him a little bit of a push, trying to get some space. And gosh, hopefully the big man's okay, Evan. Six foot, 310 pound center, big time. Walked off the field, the bad news as he walked gingerly. No, the good news is, see that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, they're all smiling. That's really good news That's because true. otherwise they'd all be frowning. And, and it looked too, when you say gingerly, it, it, it looked almost like he, he might have gotten the wind knocked out. 
You know, he landed on his belly there as, as he went down. And that's, that is huge news that he was able to get off on his own. So we see Debbie Sumo Karnbe suffer some sort of an injury. It's questionable return. Didn't come up for the second half. And pads. Grant Gibson getting some attention. Here's Devin Leary back to the air. Touchdown, Wolfpack. His fourth. TD pass of the night, tying a career high. Four yard strike to number four, Porter Rooks. With the new center in there, the big man is Dylan McMahon. Nice clean snap, nice clean pocket. And just too easy to pitch and catch there, Porter Rooks. With too much space there down near the goal line, back of the end zone. Zips it in, nice pitch and catch, and it's 37 to 3. No trickeration on the extra point. Christopher Dunn out there. Got to imagine the coaching staff, but we gave you your one chance to rush the ball, and it didn't work out. <laughs> this play worked for Devin Leary. His fourth touchdown pass to extend the NC State lead here in the third. to come back to the Chargers. was going to spend half his time in the front office, half his time coaching. It ended up spending zero time in the front office, 100% of his time coaching, but he said he has fond memories growing up with his dad, watching film. It was the 8mm film back in the day <laughs> and was at practice as often as he could from six years old at Stanford and the University of Colorado, University of Washington, but he's always loved being around the game. It was always what he wanted to do. He said it's the only thing I've ever done. You could count the construction working that he did over the summer is another job, but he said other than that, it's only been football my whole life, and it's awesome to see the progression of his career and where he's at now. Now he comes into this UConn program and wants to turn them around, a really great head force for this UConn Huskies team. <laughs> Absolutely, Lauren, and with a resume like that, I'll guarantee you that even on those work sites when he was working construction, that he would take out that carpenter pencil and draw ball plays on two-by-fours. I mean, that is, that is coaching in the blood right there. And he, he actually got a little bit more than he bargained for this year as he's the defensive coordinator as well. Quick Not pass to Devontae right, Houston. James Bates, what's it Devante like Houston. being a kid watching film number with dad? Well, it's, you know, it, it, that did. It's funny you ask that yeah, because it hit home because my dad well, used to, it, he used to, I remember back when he was at Texas Tech in those, just like he said, those eight millimeter films, my dad would be watching recruiting uh, films or watching his defense at home and he'd come and wake me up, get me out of bed to show me something. And went, James, come here and watch this guy. Come here and watch this guy. And I'll let this play go. Turner reaches for the 33. Fight number trying 11, to get another receiver. first down. But, but my dad, uh, yeah. for down many that don't know, was a longtime defensive coordinator in the NFL and coached it in college a lot. But I'll never forget one time he, he came in and woke me up in my bedroom because he wanted to show me it was a, a cheerleader standing on a guy's shoulders. And then this guy went running out of bounds and just like it was just blew it all up. And hopefully she was all right. And he had to wake me up to show me that on his on his game tape. Mm, big stop. Victor Rosa runs into a crowd. So, James, I have a four-year-old daughter, and I know that four-year-olds ask a lot of questions. You know? Were you a kid that asked your dad a lot of questions as he watched film? Were you annoying, tagging along? Uh, you know, you know. one thing I, I will say, and, and one thing that whether I ask the questions or not, one thing that a lot of people think having your, your dad as a coach, you're immediately a student of the game, it's, and, and that certainly helps being around it, but being around professionals and professionals at the college level and professionals in the NFL, guys like, like Mike Johnson, a linebacker up at Cleveland, and Clay Matthews, just Frank Minifield just taught me so much uh -oh. That's a much better punt there from Caratan. He boomed that one. It'll be down at the 25-yard line. Devin Leary. See whether he comes back onto the field after this message from Wrangler. It's in all of us. The courage to go all in. Wrangler for the ride of life.
Devin Leary getting back to work. 32 for 41. Wonder how his center, Grant Gibson, is doing. Let's check in with Lauren. Yeah, I just received word from the school. He just got the wind knocked out of him, so he's good to go, ready to be back into it. He actually, I talked to him this week, guys. He's an absolute pleasure to talk to, let me tell you. And I know, Batesy, I was telling you about this, too. Something that his teammates don't know about him and that you guys probably wouldn't expect from a 300-plus pound center is back in the day, guys, he was on the swim team until he was in fifth grade. He said, I absolutely loved it. His best stroke was the backstroke and that was his main event that in freestyle he said he was also pretty good at the butterfly as well so fun fact about grant gibson but just an absolute pleasure to talk to great leader captain for this nc state Wolfpack team um and good for him that he's not not seriously injured just got the wind knocked out of him on that play yeah that's you got that right lauren and good for him good for uh, the Wolfpack fans and the football team and you could see from those swimmer apps there you could tell that he was a swimmer as speaking your player. language is is down but hopefully Ian Swenson just got the wind knocked out of him here too but That's but Grant he's he's in the right school guys if if, if he's going to be a backstroker you know I know it's in his past but this is you know this is kind of backstroke you Braden Holloway was a backstroke All-American he's the head coach of this men and women's swim team and it's, it's a very good team very competitive uh, at NCAAs and in, in, in the ACC but last year, uh, Catherine Burkhoff, a national champion uh, in the 100 back in 21 and 22, and they did it with a sweet men's and women's. Uh, Stokowski, Casper Stokowski won it last year, the men's 100 back stroke. So it's a good stroke around here. Michael Allen with his biggest run of the night picks up 14. Hey, Batesy, you surprised at all that Devin Leary is still in the game here? Buck 40 to go in the third. You know, maybe th I'm, this will be the last drive. I would like to think. Uh, you know, there are, there are a lot of a lot of records within reach for, for Devin Leary, and there you know, and if you're if you're going to blow a few teams out here and there, it's kind of hard to reach some of those those goals and those records. And we've we've talked about it. You know, he's 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 been pretty good, but he hasn't been as as perfect as they would like. But to be in here, and if they're just going to hand the football off and run out this clock. It might be time to kind of move him out, but maybe the plan is let's just get him three good quarters and, and pull him out of there and, and let someone else go in there and, and move it around and give someone else some experience. I mean, unfortunately, that's the way college football works. A guy like Jack Chambers, we saw him against Charleston Southern. Uh, he's a good quarterback as well. Allen will move the sticks one more time as the clock continues to wind. Final minute of the third. Be sure to stick with us after the third quarter for the fourth. Brought to you by CPI Security. Play According clock. to my calculations, it's about 26 seconds away, actually. Barring an incomplete pass, you are 100% right as usual. Keeping it on the ground, Michael Allen getting some work. Barging down to the 36. Number 24, Michael Allen with the carry. Back up by zero. Only Back one score in this third quarter. Four yard pass to NC State's number four for Devin Leary's fourth touchdown of the day by Green Machine. Well, there you go, through three. The total yards, the biggest lopsided number. Their column on that for 460 to 67 and down at the bottom 0 for 9 on third down conversions the UConn offense you can't win football games if you can't stay on the field the other team 8 for 10 Leary still in there rifling long and through the hands of the deep target Terrell Timmons Jr. would have been the 11th different receiver to catch a pass tonight if Timmons could have hauled that one in. Well, and once again, there's Trey Wortham continuing to fight all the way through that play and then an excellent job right there in the hip pocket. And good pass break up once again by a cornerback. Delbert Mims getting a heavy load here in the second half, and he will take this one on third down for another conversion. Wolfpack 9 of 11 on third downs today with 26 first downs compared to UConn's two. 
And remember, it was the first two plays of the game, James. Yeah. yeah like, hey, we might have something going. Might, might have an interesting one here. And it was, it was snarfed out in a hurry. Sure was. Leary looking long. And there wasn't much space on the sideline, but the flag thrown. Intended for Anthony Smith, who had a 40-yard touchdown catch in the Charleston Southern game. Pass interference. Defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Uh, coaching up Bell here. And, you know, they have been able to cover these receivers without putting their hands on them here throughout the night. That time, Bell just, for whatever reason, felt like he needed to force Smith out of bounds. There wasn't much room for him over there anyway, the way he lined up and ran the route. Goodness, not what NC State needs is Leary getting squeezed by UConn lineman. Well, second sack of the night. Eric Watts back there. Good to see him back in. Looked like he had a, a cramp earlier and left the game. And you're absolutely right, Evan. It's, I mean, this is this is your season right here. This is in the in the fourth quarter in a game that is at this point 38 to three and has been for a while out of hand. You know, you just man, everyone's holding their breath, making sure that number 13 stays healthy. Dropped. By Tootle. Backup quarterbacks for Leary are Jack Chambers, a grad transfer from Charleston Southern, and then the talented young freshman from Carrollton, Georgia, MJ Morris. Both those guys saw time against the Buccaneers a couple weeks ago. And you figured in a 35 point game, you'd see them in the fourth quarter tonight. But apparently, Tim Beck and Dave Doran want to see more from Devin Leary running the offense here. Timeout taken, and we'll take it too. with 13.33 remaining. And we'll be honest, we were wondering during the break to each other here in the booth why Devin Leary is still in the game. He's had a nice night. One interception was a bad throw. His completion percentage could be higher because he's hit several hands that did not result in completions. You know, and, and not to take too much away from this UConn defensive unit, there, there are a couple of these deep balls. If that's what you'd like to think, they've been trying to figure out ways to uh, connect on those, be a little bit more accurate on the deep balls. Perhaps here's one right here. Here's a rep. Mm. Should have been intercepted. Undercut by Sheeran. Intended for Coit. So Christopher Dunn's coming back on the field. One interception earlier tonight, and this one should have been number two. You talk about those offensive guys, the ball's gone in and out of their hands. Doesn't get any easier than this for Sheeran. Could have had a pick here at Carter Finley instead. Here comes Dunn. Dunn from 41. Officially a 40-yarder. Perfect. Three. And this is still interesting for some folks out there, James. Because the line opened at 40 and it closed at 38. I'm just saying. Oh. I'm just saying. Well, I wonder what Lauren had on her show. They talk about that stuff on those shows. November 20th in stores. It's one of those, if you don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak, that you hate to see either team lose it. And just two teams going back and forth, playing their guts out. And that's, that's the beauty of college athletics. It was an unbelievable game. Jakia Brown Turner hit a crazy clutch shot. And such a great veteran class that Westmore had. Look forward to seeing what the Wolf Pack women bring starting just over a month from now. 
You know, it's starting to feel like it. this morning we got up and, and went to breakfast and it was it was cold. It was cool. It was cool. <laughs> well, for a I'm Florida, from Florida guy. <laughs> so it Come was on cold now. for me. It was cold. It was perfect fall morning weather. Lauren, was it cold or cool this morning? I will, I will say it was cool, but James Bates wore a short sleeve t-shirt being from Florida. And he's like, yeah, I'm so cold right now. I'm so cold right now. I'm like, dude, you're wearing a short sleeve t-shirt. Wear a long sleeve next time. You can't ask a Michigander to, you know, to judge the Floridian. That's not We're fair. We're used to like blizzard, sideways wind. Similar to a Husky, we can survive in very cold temperatures. Just saying. <laughs> Big stick from Sean Brown there on the run. Start this drive. Yeah. Still playing hard. Both both sides of the ball. Got to be careful. You got to bring those those arms and wrap up because some of these guys and they've got one at NC State, Sumo Kongbe. You, you better not just go up and deliver a blow because he'll come spinning right out of it and get 10 more yards. John Brown has a nose for the football, scored a touchdown for covering the block punt in the ECU game a few weeks back. And I'll have you, Evan, and you, Lauren Jabara, know that the reason I wore shorts in, in the short sleeve shirt is because after breakfast, I went to a run through campus, which for many years I would come here in Carter Finley just off of campus. I, I, I never knew the beauty of, of the campus here in Raleigh, but what an incredible area and a great place on a day like today to go for a nice jog. So there, both Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. There you go. Also, Batesy, I just have to say, kudos to you because after breakfast I went and sat in my bed and watched football all day. So you definitely won that. You're one to know when it comes to the workouts for today. <laughs> <laughs> Batesy wins yes. the works out, workout every day. Yes. Also, Devon. how do you go on a run right after you eat breakfast? Like, I need, like, the 45 minutes to an hour to digest, you know? How do you go right on a run after that? Well, I I took a little bit of time before I did, and I, I made a very funny meme for my daughter's <laughs> boyfriend. It's his birthday today, Alfonso. Happy birthday. And I did that. So it digested. It was a southern scramble, so I needed a little extra time. <laughs> two biscuits don't forget the two biscuits okay <laughs> maybe, maybe one but even before you got there too with the apple butter third time's the charge the southern scramble down goes turner oh. josh harris got there first Caden fordham finished him off loss of nine Watch Big Zero, man. He's he's so active. Look at him. Goes goes right through the middle of that offensive line. Big man right now at 325. A guy who's lost over 50 pounds since he arrived here on campus. Just a sophomore. And like you said, cleaning it up. Caden Fordham. Bright future for him. The young linebacker, redshirt freshman. That's a drop. And that's not Zion Turner's fault. And if that pass was caught, he would be 10 of 11 throwing the football today. It's like the hidden stat in the game. Now, he doesn't have a ton of yards, although he threw for 17 last week. And he's more than doubled that this week, 38 yards on his nine completions. But he's hitting his receivers. He's given them a chance to make plays. They just don't have the bodies to make plays downfield against a defense like this. Yeah, and a defense that, that has done a good job, too, of Hey, you can chip away all you want. We're just not going to move. We're not going to give you the big hitters. A hole for Houston. But it was third and very long. So a gain of 13 brings them within about five of the first. And it looks like Jim Moore is going to go for it. Yeah, linebackers stepping up and, and filling in those situations. You can't just trade a body for a body. If, if you're going to get in there, you've got to set that edge. You can't give them that big, big wide gap to run through. Let's see what they've got for them on fourth down and four. Now. Complete Pachai the marker. Shaheen Battle doing a great job. And again, this has been the ongoing theme here throughout the night for Tony Gibson's defense. 
It's fourth down and four. You want to complete a two-yard pass? We've got some guys that can tackle across the board in this defensive secondary. The linebackers as well. You can chip away all you want, but you're not going to get past this. Drop them, and they get back off the field. There was the game winner in double overtime, and there's a look. October 1st and beyond. Florida State, who, by the way, much improved. They're all over Boston College. Last I saw, it was a lopsided score there in the panhandle of the Sunshine State uh, over Boston College. So that'll be a tough one. They'll get them here, though. Carter Finley, and here we go. New quarterback, finally, for the Wolfpack and Jack Chambers. Charleston Southern transfer. Chambers going to work. I heard a story that you gave Jack Chambers a gift. A, a be less sucky today keychain. <laughs> and not, not that he was sucky, and I, I'm telling him to be less sucky, but it's it's, it's one of my little uh, merch pieces. And, uh, and you know, I, you struck I up went a to chat with him. I huh? did. I went to practice a uh, walkthrough a couple weeks ago before the Charleston Southern game. and was walking with Annabelle Myers, who does such a fantastic job every time we come to town, uh, sports information director, and she said, hey, meet Jack Chambers, and I walked back with him and just enjoyed enjoyed visiting with him so much that I wanted to get a little something because I felt like I gained something from the conversation. Yeah. It was, it was an old, in his really old hotel key tag, you know, like the ones they used to have, the old Holiday Inn plastic key tag. Look at this little burst and here. Michael He's Allen threw the ball pretty good on the ground. Patience, moving laterally, and then trying to get outside. It's True freshman from Greenville. Played at J.H. Rose High School. Institution, offense, more than 11 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Dave Doran appears to disagree <laughs> with the call. Yes, he does. And the linesman there, he's like, okay, coach, did you see that? Hey, I'm usually not a good lip reader, but I can read that. Okay, coach. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's those, those pre-snap penalties, which they, they cleaned up for the most part in the thick of the game. Allen. Tripped up. He was a sprinter for his high school track team. Ran a 10-700. It's pretty quick. Yeah. Got a, a, a couple track stars, Victor Rosa, right? And, you know, Jordan Houston we, in street clothes here tonight. But as a youngster up in Maryland, he was one of the fastest in the nation when he was 10 years old in the 100 meters. Jackson Mitchell still in there flying around making tackles. Enter the night with 49 tackles in four games. Nine more tackles tonight for Jackson. Durante Jones with 13 leading the way for UConn. Jackson one under his total against the Wolverines. Last weekend he had 10. He had actually 16 tackles a couple weeks ago against Syracuse. Syracuse, nice win last night over Tony Elliott's Virginia Cavaliers. Flag down. Chambers overthrows Allen in the flat. Pops back up after getting crunched pretty good. Holding, number 53 offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Chambers hit pretty hard here as he got rid of that football. There's Watts. Derek Eason, part of the seven-man rotation in the O-line, a backup guard. And uh, misspoke before. Colin Smith kicked the field goal earlier in the quarter. And Smith, rather than done, getting a chance to kick here again. Colin 
handles kickoffs. He's done a good job with that. Get an opportunity to do some scoring, although this one fades wide to the left. That that missed field goal is very important to someone oh, out there. Oh, I forgot. Oh, no. 6.43 to play. A lot can happen in 6.43. Here's a, they've had more guys drafted that have graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas. Gone on, of course, played college football, then into the NFL, drafted in the NFL, in any high school in the nation. And there's a look. And one of the greats that played there is Zion Turner, who's not in right now. Cale Millen replaced him. Cale Millen, whom Jim Mora has known literally since the day he was born. Jim Mora remains with Cale's UCLA. Battery. And that throw rejected like a Manny Bates block. Jalen Parker with a rejection. Yeah, Millen at that point probably should have tucked it and seen what he could have done on the ground because <laughs> I mean, that was like right in the face. He's actually probably lucky that Parker went airborne. And he, and he didn't decide to, to hit him right there in the face. He was so close. He probably he, he had his choice. Only point so far tonight for UConn. The field goal is the first half clock expired. That's a first down carry for Robert Burns. Transfer from Miami. Who is on the watch list for the 2022 Werfel Trophy, which is college football's premier award for community service, named in honor of your old quarterback, James, that led you and uh, the Gators to the championship. 96. Freshman brother, class of 92, after he won a state championship at Fort Walton Beach High School in the Panhandle. But yeah, what an incredible guy, and what an incredible list of, of college football players that have earned that trophy and that are up for it like we have here every single year. So it's a cool story as the carry taken by Victor Rosa. Why is Robert Burns on the Werfel Trophy watch list? He's the co-founder of an organization called Second Spoon. It's a nonprofit that provides excess food from college dining halls to those in need. Yeah, phenomenal. And, and there's a guy from another strong program in South Florida, Gulliver Prep. Started at Miami, did Rob Burns. Yeah, it's on and off the field. Incredible people here, some of these college athletes, not just football players, but, you know, they, they've got such a full slate that people don't really realize. And, and not to mention all the hard work in the classroom. For them to go and put what energy, what time they have left, to helping other people out, to, to using their position to make things happen in the community. It, I mean, it takes, especially at that age, it takes for a very unselfish young man or young woman and a very special young man and young woman. So it's, it's so nice to be able to acknowledge them you know, with awards like the Warfel Trophy, W-U-E-R-F-F-E-L, Warfel. There. You learned how to spell that a couple decades ago. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not easy. Well, I'm just waiting for the James Bait Award watch list for the best artists in all of college football. There was a, there was a guy a couple of years ago. I don't think it was Fox at UNC that uh, that designed a logo for him. A defensive lineman. There was a uh, nice artist up there. And, this, this could be a thing. Yeah, it could, it could be. be. It could it be. Do you do any sculpting? Because you could create a trophy. Um, uh, only when <laughs> only when uh, Whoopi Goldberg is around. Is that who it was? Is that Whoopi Goldberg? Uh, I don't remember. Victor Rosa on the move. Down to the 23. Showing you his wheels. There's, there's another one of the track stars out there. Yep. 10.74 in the 100 meter. State champ. Yeah, state champ in the 200 meter last year. Look at him. Gatorade Player of the Year. Thrown into the mix after some of the injuries. I mentioned Nate Carter earlier. 
Good looking young back out of Bristol, Connecticut, right there, Bristol Central High School. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure we talked enough about Nathan Carter tonight. I mean, if, if he was healthy, separated his shoulder last week against Michigan, he was a special running back at 190 yards in their opener against Utah State, nine and a half yards of pop. But uh, he, along with many others, are banged up. Victor Rosa doing a nice job. And uh, Lauren down to the sideline has more. Yes, I actually talked to him earlier this week about two things. One, I said, you went from playing high school last year to play in under the lights against an ACC opponent. Last week at the big house, he's like, this is what dreams are made of. Just being able to be out here, learn from my teammates, learn from head coach Jim Mora. And then he also said he gives a lot of credit to his high school coach, Jeff Papijan. When he was in youth football, he actually met his coach, and he was his older brother's coach. And the two of them played one year together in high school. They talked about coming to high school together, growing up, and just living out the dream now. But when he won Gatorade Player of the Year, his high school coach actually called him, told him, and he said, wow, man, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. But he said a lot of his growth as a player throughout his entire career, not just in high school, but through middle school, even in youth football before that, was due to his head coach, Jeff Papazian. So congrats to them. It's an awesome relationship between the two of them. And really cool to see a freshman getting out here, getting reps, getting plays, and learning under a guy like head coach Jamora. Absolutely. Three years ago, Rosa started for his high school team. Quarterback, because of his athleticism like that, it's a touchdown, and it matters to somebody. The Huskies are in the end zone for the first time tonight. Eleven yard scamper from Victor Rosa, his second rushing touchdown of his young and promising career. That offensive line continues to fight. Guys like Big Chase Lunt, who has been in there the entire time. The right tackle, a sophomore from Arlington Martin, back in Metroplex, Arlington, Texas. And Victor Rosa showing you that he can cut and turn it north and south and get into the paint. Five first downs on that 10 play drive for Connecticut. Only had three first downs before that drive began. So a moment for Victor Rosa to remember. Jim Moore spoke incredibly affectionately about Rosa. Tough as nails. Love how he plays, practices. True freshman. He was, he was a scout team guy, you know, as, as most young guys are in the first week. Really good defensive back, they say, too. And in the week one, they're like, uh, you know what? Yeah, I like what I see. A little, like it a little bit too much. We're, we're going to have to get him involved. And he didn't flinch in the big house last week when he was thrown into the mix, thrown into the fire in a hurry and, and asked not only to run the football and be the premier running back but to return uh, punts and kicks as well. How about that sweet black turtleneck that he got? That's one thing that, that all these Floridians don't have to, they don't have a turtleneck that they wear with their football uniform uh, late in the season like he did, like the Sprockets turtleneck that he had. <laughs> UConn could have onside kicked. Instead, they send it deep into the end zone. 2.08 remaining. And now a quick message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project. With gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Sometime tonight or tomorrow, the game time will officially be announced for NC State Clemson next Saturday. A new batch of rankings will come out tomorrow, James, and NC State certainly passing the eye test tonight. A couple mistakes. If you really want to be specific and pick nits, you can complain all you want, but 41-10 looks good. And Clemson is on tap next Saturday. Yeah, but you know, Dave Doran will tell you, there's Jackson White, my man, and helping with the special teams right there next to Dave Doran. His, his father's, a, speaking of all in the family, his father Brian White's a great running back coach that um, Seven. Seven. is now at Bowling Green. But um, 
Dave Dorn in week one was was upset. They go to East Carolina and beat a, a very good East Carolina team, and they dropped a good chunk in the polls. They won a, a football game, and they dropped. Yeah. And they, my, my, my Gators maybe could have helped out a little bit. Tennessee's right in front of them, so they could have moved up in front of Tennessee. Yeah, the, the, the Gators won today and up on Rocky Top. But, Tenth rank Arkansas is in trouble. They're down 23 21 late in the fourth. A&M, is that who they're playing? A&M? Yep. Uh, number six, Oklahoma is in trouble. Okay. They're down 27 20 against Kansas State late in the third. Wow. Number seven, USC down 7 0 second quarter against Oregon State. There's going to be some movement, yeah. as you said earlier. It's going to be a wacky season. And it's, and it's nice to have games in the ACC that are the gossip in college football. And Clemson, NC State next week. That will be the gossip. That'll be a fun one to key on. Well, it's like earlier today. I mean, a lot of eyes were on Clemson, Wake Forest. Great game down to the wire. Big question for NC State, the status of Jordan Houston and Demi Sumo Karnbe heading into next week. Houston didn't play tonight. Demi had four carries, 49 yards, and a score in the first half. We have not seen him other than on the sideline since. And NC State does not have to snap it again. And Dave Doran says, thumbs up. Dave Doran, the 144th game in his head coaching career. It's the first time he ever faced Connecticut. The 61st different college football team Dave Doran has gone up against. And he beats him 41 to 10. Yeah, and I think, I think that you know Jim Moore is in his first year. He's, he's got some guys that continue to fight. He's got some.